Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good third Sunday morning. I hope you all are doing well. I hope that... Well, I guess I... <laughs> Hope that you all are blessed and highly, highly favored. We get started in a few moments, just waiting for some more people to check in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Auntie. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're prospering. Oh, I be forgetting to turn. Let me turn these things on. Yes, happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. We trying to get our lives over here. You know, I'm not a morning person, so. <laughs> but I thank God for a brand new day. I really do. I really do. Give it another minute, and then we're gonna go on in Jesus' name. Yes. But at any good morning, Amy saying, How you doing? Hope y'all are doing well and prospering. You're gonna get started in a few minutes. I think everybody kind of dragging today. I, I know I am. I'm a, running a little late. I didn't even have a chance to type up the the lesson title or nothing on the on the um on the on the screen this morning. <clears throat> but nonetheless, like I said, we going on in Jesus' name. Um And we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm just trying to pull up the devotional uh, reading. I believe, yeah. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Kelly. Good morning, um, Shannon. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Listen, make sure you're sharing this with somebody because somebody needs to hear it. Nevertheless, we going on in Jesus' name. So, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm glad it. I hope y'all are doing well. It's great. Third Sunday, always the day that the Lord has made, so we're going to rejoice. Um, I'll go back and type up the lesson title and stuff in a minute. I was running behind this morning. But nonetheless, we are on lesson seven. Today is July the 19th. We're still in 2020, this illustrious year, um, year for the church to rise up and be great. We are still in unit two, um, dealing with wisdom, wisdom in the gospels. And our lesson today, I like this title. It says, Wisdom That Astounds and Offends. So is it possible for wisdom to offend? I don't know. We're going to find out. So our devotional reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 7, verses 14 through 23. Good morning, um, Auntie Angela. Hope you're doing well. Um, our background scripture comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, 
and verses seven, uh, chapter seven, excuse me, verses one through 23. And our print passage comes from Mark chapter six, verses one through six. And our key verse is from Mark chapter six, verses two through three. And I'm going to read that out of the NIV. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. It says, where did this man get these things? They asked, what's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Mm -hmm. Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Okay, who, who, who is he? Good morning, Brother Bobby. Who is he? Who do you think he is? Y'all know how they do. Y'all know. Um, our devotional reading again comes from Mark chapter 7 verses 14 through 23 and it reads as follows it says then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear all of you listen he said and try to understand do the best you can to understand it says it's not what goes into your body okay that defiles you you are defiled by what comes from your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says, then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd. And his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used. And he asked him, he said, don't you understand either? He said, can't you see that the food you put into your body cannot defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, good morning, Annie Briber. Hope you're doing well. It says, by saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. And then he added, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of the person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, Theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Hmm. Something to think about on this morning. Not necessarily what you eat, but... What's in here? What's in your heart? What's in your spirit? Okay. <clears throat> so in our lesson today, we definitely hope to identify the reason or reasons why people in Nazareth could not accept the wisdom with which Jesus spoke. Um, we also hope to repent of occasions when Jesus' words resulted in us taking offense rather than accepting the wisdom inherent in the words spoken. And we also hope to commit to accepting the words of Jesus, even when his word are challenging and stretching. And that's what the word of God is. God, um, good morning, Jay. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, God said they did not come to bring, bring peace, but they came to bring a sword. And we all know that sword is two-edged, okay? It cuts both ways, going in and coming out. So that the, right, the, the word of truth can be rightfully divided. So that those things that are within us, all the things that we just read in verses 20 through 23 can be cut out of us. Because we all know Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. And that's not to say that you are perfect, but you should be striving. You really should be pushing. And when, as it's our deliverance, because our salvation, I was sorry about that. I... It's morning time. I keep forgetting to um, cut this the Wi-Fi off. But at any rate, our key terms are hometown, miracles, prophet, synagogue, teach, and took offense. And those are given to us this morning in their Greek tongue along with the definition. I'm not sure if Kenard has put the lesson up, but if anybody wants to, um, if you have the book and you can follow along, great. Um, if not, if you want to go back and review later, that's what it's for. We need to reinstitute our Sunday school challenge. I need to write that down. 
Anyway, it says, Martavius returned home after 10 years living abroad. Everyone was surprised to see him. They thought that after being gone so long, he was gone for good. So the speculation mill went into overtime. Everyone had their own theory as to why he had returned. It says, had he been a failure and had no other place to go? Was he in trouble and came home to hide? Did he come home to sell drugs? Like, what's your reason? So on his first Sunday back home, Martavius attended Sunday school and worship at his childhood church. It says, during Sunday school, Martavius made several enlightening comments about the lesson. Those attending were astonished. They were, remembered the young Martavius who was polite but did not say much. Good morning, Trina. Hope you're doing well. Says, after a few more Sundays, the superintendent asked Martavius mm -hmm. to teach the adult class. He was excited about the opportunity. He prayed and prepared mm -hmm. all week long. When Sunday came, he felt ready to share with the congregation. Wow, Martavius' teaching mm -hmm. method was mm -hmm. radically different. He had them sit in a circle. He made the session interactive. He interjected wisdom nuggets. No one had thought before. He moved people out of their comfort zone, challenging them in their study. He really did a great job. He did so well until he regularly taught. Now, here we go. Now, he, he, he helping the people now. But here we go. Here we go. It says, still, several of the people who grew up with Martavius could only remember him from his childhood days. They discounted his teaching and rejected the notion that he was doing a good job. Good morning, mother. <clears throat> it says, eventually, they stopped attending Sunday school and started stirring up others against him. Now, see, foolishness, okay? When the pastor finally got wind of this uprising, he met with the disgruntled Sunday school participants. He listened to their complaints, then responded, I wasn't here 10 years ago, okay? All I know is that Brother Martavius is doing a great job. Could it be that you're upset because his teaching is moving you out of your comfort zone? Isn't that a good thing? Don't you want to grow in your Christian walk? How many times have we heard stories like Martavius's? How many? Good morning, Sister Katrina. How many times? Okay. And not even stories like that, but y'all know, because um, I, I, well, let me say this. I know I have definitely um, been challenged in my walk. Good morning, Uncle Reggie. How you doing? Um, and there are times when, when the word hits, it hits. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate God for that because he is not a respecter of person and he cries loud and spares not. That And I'm, I'm grateful for that because I don't want to go to hell. I don't, don't spare my feelings. Just tell me. If it's true to what you're saying, I'm going to listen to wisdom. I'm going to listen to sound knowledge and judgment. And I'm going to do something different. I know you all are too. Um, but y'all know we we know people. We got those people in our lives. I don't care what you say. They know it all. You can't tell them nothing. And they ain't trying to hear nothing from you. Because they know you. I remember you. You used to be the one that did so and so and such and such. How you going to tell me? You know. Y'all know those people. So at any rate, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you for this day, a brand new day, brand new mercies, a day that we have never seen before and a day that we will not ever see again. We thank you for your presence and your will being implemented in our lives. We ask that you forgive us for sins that we have committed in mouth and deed and in thought. Please let your word go forth this morning with power and clarity. Help us to understand it. Help us to hide it in our hearts so that we do not sin against you. Help us to take what we learned today and apply it to our lives and interactions during throughout the rest of the week. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right, so our first analysis or topic is they were amazed, okay? And that comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 2a, and it says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. 
It says, when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Now make sure y'all sharing this. Somebody needs to hear it. Okay. Somebody needs to grow. Somebody needs to develop in Christ. Somebody's a babe. It's time to stop drinking milk. Time to start eating some meat. So make sure you're sharing it. Okay. It says, after a series of miraculous healings in the region of Gerenice, Gerenice, excuse me, y'all. Gerena sings, as recorded in Mark, Jesus returned to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to visit his hometown. Mm -hmm. In some sense, mm -hmm. Jesus returned to his hometown was not unlike a victorious athlete returning home after winning the big game. He mm -hmm. was accompanied by his disciples. Ooh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little discombobulated, but it says he was accompanied by his disciples who were no doubt still amazed at what they had seen their master do. We should note that since his disciples were present, Jesus was not making a personal visit home. He was there for ministry work. All right. And we've got to be prepared and ready to do ministry work, y'all. It says, although Mark did not specifically give the name of Jesus' hometown, he had already identified Nazareth as Jesus' hometown in Mark chapter 1, verse 9. It says, although Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Nazareth was Jesus' hometown. It had sense, it made sense for Jesus to want to share with the people he grew up with. He had not been warmly received previously. Perhaps this time would be different. You think? It says, finally, Jesus had the chance to share with his hometown community. It was the Sabbath, and everyone was assembled in the local synagogue. We may infer that the Sabbath was the only time of the week for formal religious instruction. They did not have midweek Bible study. <laughs> On that day, they had a guest speaker, Joseph's boy, Jesus. Mark does not indicate the expectations of those assembled. However, we can judge from their later comments that they did not expect much. Perhaps Jesus would share some basic comments using his experience in the carpentry trade as a frame of reference. Yet that was not the case. As Jesus began to teach, they were astonished. Mm -hmm. And before I read the question, I just want to, again, reiterate the fact that we all know how it is. You know, we grow up with somebody and a lot of times we don't, we kind of in our minds, it's like, oh, that's a little so-and-so, you know, that's just a little so-and-so, that's whatever. And I think sometimes when, <clears throat> when people begin to press in, especially people that we were, uh, are, you know, affiliated with, when they begin to really press into Christ, sometimes people are intimidated by that. They, you know, not only intimidated, but they get offended because it's like, here's this person who has decided to rise above. And the thing about that is, is that we all can rise above. We all can do it. We've seen it several times, the things that we have endeavored to do and, and when um, the outcome is revealed, we're like, wow, I didn't even know I had that in me. We can all rise above. Good morning, Amy Map. Sometimes people just, for whatever reason, it's easier, like the lesson here says, to stay in your comfort zone. It's easier to do nothing. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is, and I just want you all to know, as um, us being children of the Most High God, we cannot stay in our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. We have got to be stretched. We have got to be pushed. We have got to be pulled. I don't know if you all have ever seen the process of candy or, um, good morning, um, Sierra, being processed or pulled or stretched. Mm -hmm. That's how it is with us. We have got to be stretched mm -hmm. in order for us to be edible, in order for us to be tasteful to other people. We are the salt of the earth, you know, and... We have got to get out of the mindset that, oh, well, we'll let somebody else do it. Let them, let them do it. No, 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 no. We are citizens of heaven. We are ambassadors. 
We are those five wise virgins, okay? We have not only got to be prepared, but we need to be not just prepared for his coming, but we need to be prepared to be uncomfortable. Amen. Because um, we are living in a time, and y'all know this. I know y'all know it. I know y'all have seen it, but <clears throat> it's getting to a point where anything goes. Whatever you want to do, however you feel like it, and I'm and and listen, it, it's annoying me. It is annoying me that we in the church and you got people talking about, well, you know, God knows my heart and 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 and, and the Lord don't judge and why I'm like, stop, y'all gonna stop telling that lie, stop that because He does judge and He is going to judge, and the problem that. You don't understand, or the problem that you are facing, sir or ma'am, is that he gonna start with the church first. Amen. So stop telling people that. Stop thinking you're gonna go into heaven anyhow, because you're not. Anytime, anytime. And stop thinking that you just gonna you gonna come in here and tear the church up, the benches and the pews, and shut shut it all down, and then live like a heathen the rest of the week. No, sir, and no ma'am. So we are living in a time, y'all, where it's time. I, I I believe God has, like I said, He done pushed the reset button, the reboot, okay? And it is time for us to be stretched and to be pulled. It is time for um, us to, and I don't want to say uncomfortable, so to speak, but when the word talks about us being a peculiar people and this world not being our home, we need to start living like this. We're not here to stay. We are not here to stay. We are here to cause mass destruction, tear some things up, kill some ideology, carry away some false truths, and spread the word of God because we are the kingdom of God. We are the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And so we got to start acting like it, living like it, and we have got to start crying loud and sparing not, okay? And so um, our question says, when, when someone you know has displayed surprising insights and knowledge, what were yours and others' reactions? And I mean, that's self-explanatory. We know some people accepted it. Some people were proud, applauding, and pushing them on, and like, wow. But there was other people with that crab in the basket, barrel mentality. Who, mm -hmm. who, they, who they think they is? Mm -hmm. You have several seats, sis, because you, mm -mm, I remember you. Listen, well, I'm serving God now. I, I, whatever the old stuff was, that's gone. That's passed away. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a new creature. You don't know me. That's how I be like, you don't know me. This ain't what you want. You don't know me. Back up. Back up, sis. Mm. Go sit, as young people say, go sit down, bro, because you don't know me. Okay? That's how. Oh, that's right, Tree. Sometimes we we look at people. We do. You know we get that. I don't have my glasses this morning, but you know we get that. Mm. Mm, like you behind the garbage truck on a hot summer day. <laughs> That's how, You know how it is. But what we have got to do is attune our ears and our hearts to wisdom. Okay. We have, and, and I'm, and you know what? Not only do we want to be the look down your nose at, you know, people. We don't want to be that person. But we want to be the person that people are going, mm. you know what they... You know what I'm saying? And not because we want to make somebody mad or we want to upset people, but because it's time to tell the the truth about God. I just, can the real church stand up? Amen. Okay? There is a standard in serving him. There is um, a way of doing things that he requires. And we are moving into a time where... Um, the world is trying to whitewash everything that we do. They're trying to use legislation to um, censure us. Good morning, Grandmama. Um, they don't want us to talk about God. They don't want us to pronounce or say that you live. they live in foul. Hmm. They don't want... 
They don't want to hear that. Y'all re listen. Read Proverbs and read Romans chapter one. Just if you don't read nothing else, read chapter one. They don't want they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they don't want us to say nothing. And they're trying to make us be quiet. But we are entering a time when we can't be quiet. We can't be scared. We just as openly defiant as they are. We have got to be just as openly defiant. And it's not enough to love everybody. But we have got to be standing up against injustice. We have got to be. That's right. We're going to be left, Trina. Okay. Not only are we going to be left, but we're not going to have no peace because we know what to do is right. We just mm -hmm. got to do it. Amen. You know, it's no, there is no if, ands, or buts. That's you right. know, Jesus has said, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And not only if you love him, good morning, Auntie Vera. Not only if you love him, but if you're saying you his, if you're saying you belong to him, you coming from his house. It's a requirement. It's what we got to do. And it is uncomfortable. It is challenging. It's oftentimes painful because you got some people who you don't want to say things to. You don't want to offend. You don't want them to be upset. But listen, the command is not coming from you. Mm -hmm. It's coming from God. Amen. And 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 if we are changed in our hearts, we it's a certain way we should want to live anyway. We mm -hmm. shouldn't want certain people around us. That's right. We should not want to be in the company mm -hmm. of certain people. Mm -hmm. Just because for so many, and y'all know this, y'all, y'all know I'm not lying. For so many, it's anything goes. Mm -hmm. But with us, we we know. We didn't learn Christ like that. He didn't come here for us to have the anything goes attitude. And we have got to begin to bring heaven here on earth. We have got to begin to start casting down these imaginations. Amen. Pulling down and bringing captive anything. Anything. Any and everything that exalts itself against the word of God, against our God, against our home. Amen. Anything. We got to clear up those erroneous facts. Good morning, cousin. We got to let people know, no, 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 no. That's not what God says. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. And you only saying that because you don't know him. Okay. If you knew him, you wouldn't be talking like that. Mm. It's time out. God has, God has stood up for us, has provided for us, has taken care of us on so many occasions. It is time for us to return the favor. It is time for us to exercise our true love for him and our relationship with him. When you're in a relationship with somebody, you don't let people treat your partner any kind of way. Okay. And I don't even want to say partner because, you know, they that's the word that's being, we don't know whether that's a, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. But um, your husband or your wife. You don't let people treat them any kind of way. Talk bad to them. Talk down to them. And when they say something, you defend. Amen. You know? That's right. You That's right. You have got to begin to change your affiliations, Trina. You have got to begin to... Your circle becomes extremely small. I know mine is. Because it's just certain stuff I don't even want to hear. That, that's what you believe? Okay. All right. Keep on. Because I done already told you. But I ain't going to argue with you. And guess what? I don't have to kick it with you. Mm. Not because I'm trying to be funny, but I'm on a, it's a place somewhere I'm trying to go. And obviously, you ain't trying to go there. And so since you're not trying to go there, I ain't trying to make you go there. I'm going to keep praying for you. But I'm, I'm going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm, I got to go somewhere else. I got to do something different. All right? So... Having said that, our next section is wisdom from where? Where, where from where? Where is, where is it coming from? And it says, um, where did this man get these things, they ask? Where, where is it coming from? It says, what's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Now, here they go. Mm -hmm. Here they go. Okay. Instead of listening and converting, working on yourself, now he, you, who, what? No, he did say, who do you think he is? Who she thinks she is? Okay. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? 
aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. I mean, and, and they, I mean, and they talking like, I don't know, because I, I wasn't there. And they asked a question about what was it like parenting Jesus last week. I don't know. Maybe they acted like a bunch of heathens growing up. And people was like, they were they poor. And they was ghetto fied. They so and so. I know good and well. Mm -mm. Who would, what? You know, like, God couldn't raise up somebody. Right. Or wouldn't raise up somebody. That speaks to a lot of people's mentality. Okay, that speaks to why a lot of people don't get healed, why they don't get delivered, why the miraculous doesn't break forth in their lives. Because you study looking at okay. who, I don't know, who they think they is. Mm -hmm. I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they did that. What? And that's your problem. That's your problem. Y'all, that's what y'all tell them. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to start telling them. That's why things not breaking forth and happening in your life. That's why God is not moving like he needs to move because of your mentality. And guess what? Because you are ordained by the most high God, you could say that. You sure can. I back you up. If you scared to say, come get me. I'll go with you. Have my hands on my hips and everything. <laughs> yeah. What they say? Mm -hmm. They said you was messy and you messy. And so what? What you what? That's right. I give you permission to check them. Check them. They messy. Just some messy wessies. Okay? Or as I be saying, when the, when the kids make me ride here, they just pissy. They pissy wessy. <laughs> Stop that mess. Get your whole life. Okay? All right? So, that's how they were looking at you. And that's how they look at us. Who do they think they are? I'm a child of the most high God. Who do you think you are? Mm. Is the question. Mm. Or better yet, who do you want to be? What do you want to be? Do you want to keep being a heathen? Mm. Or do you want to be invited into kingdom life? Do you want to live like God requires you to live? Because guess what? If that's the case, it requires some intestinal fortitude. Amen. Okay? It requires some breath holding. Mm. It requires some white knuckling it sometimes. Okay? That's the question. So here it says the people of Nazareth were in an uproar. In their minds, there was no way, none whatsoever. Here they go. See that mind? You got to kill that mindset, okay? It says there was no way that Jesus could be speaking with such authority. Mm. He was speaking on a level they had never heard before. And I imagine because of his status in the community growing up, because evidently, you know, Joseph and Mary were poor. That they was probably looking at him like, he don't even have no formal education. Where is this coming? Like, where is this coming from? Who, I mean, who he think he talking to? They, in the class system, they, they the lower class. They down here. Where, where is he coming from? It says, Jesus' words were not the monotonous repetition of the law. They were soul stirring and life challenging. If that wasn't enough, Jesus would perform in miracles. Since the gospel writers made no mention of him after the 12-year-old Jesus temple visit, we assume that Joseph was dead at the time of Jesus' teaching on this Sabbath. Otherwise, as one of the men of the community, Joseph would have been present to hear his stepson. Those witnesses Jesus' ministry mockingly referred to him as a carpenter because of his... Did I just say that? Listen to this. It said <clears throat> they referred to him as a carpenter because of his lack of formal learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that weren't bad enough, they referred to Jesus as Mary's son. Mm -hmm. She was married. She wasn't no loose woman. They mm -hmm. need to get someone and sit down. It says it was customary to refer to children by their father's name. We can only assume that they chose to use his mother's name because some knew that Joseph wasn't Jesus' father. Now, here they go. Mm -hmm. Look at her. She just was mm. messy. Mm. Messing around. You didn't even... Uh-uh. You didn't even follow the Jewish laws and customs. She wasn't even a virgin when she got married. Mm. Now, here they... Mm. 
She was a virgin. But in their mind now, y'all listen, y'all know some of these messy people. They That's another reason why the reset button was church. Because probably need to purge them up at the congregation. Because you're full of foolishness. Okay? Instead of listening and paying attention, you disturbing the congregation. Y'all listen, y'all know we got them people. Y'all know we got them people in our church. Don't quit playing. Okay? It says, we should note that the negative reaction of these people is proof positive that folks in the present day church did not just start being mean to their fellow congregants. Come on. Here we go. Okay. They even included Jesus' siblings. Now, see here, y'all dragging the whole family. It says, since they had been mocking him, we must assume they mentioned Jesus' siblings as a further act of ridicule. Just, just messy. Okay. It could have been that his siblings had not attained a certain level of stature in the community or were just guilty by association. Mm -hmm. Probably guilty by association. It says, we know that Jesus became the leader of the church in Jerusalem and wrote the epistle that bears his name. Many Bible scholars accept Judas as the author of the epistle of Jude. We know nothing more about his other brothers and not even the names of his sisters. Mm -hmm. When we sum up the reactions of Jesus' hometown crowd, we can only reach one conclusion. They were highly offended at Jesus. Yeah. In their minds, he was a he was parading as a rabbi. Mm. Okay? That's right, Auntie Vera. Mind it. Listen, let that man be great. Okay? We let us be great. Okay, stop. Listen, don't come over here. Don't come over here. And I, I'm going to tell you right. That's what I will tell Joker in a minute. Look, don't come over here with no mess. Okay, if you're not coming over here with a solution, please do not be a part of the problem. Good morning, Lat Latasha. Don't do it. Don't Just don't do it. Um, Because I'm going to tell you in a heartbeat, look, this is what the words say. Okay. Uh, now... If we leaning on my authority, yes. Okay? If we leaning on my authority, then yeah, you, you probably should be side-eyeing me. But I'm telling you what does says the Lord. Or as some people say, you know, people say period, period. What does says the Lord? Okay? I'll tell you what does says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't come over here because this ain't what you want. I'm tr This ain't what you want. Because I'm going to go ahead and read you and write you. I'm going to go up one side and come down the other. Okay. Don't come over here with that mess. Don't do it. Just, mm -mm. you ain't about that life. You is not about that life. Don't do it. That's right, Trina. Period. Don't do it. Just save yourself the trouble and don't come this way. Because I'm going to tell you what thus says the Lord. Not the word according to Carla, but... According to the Lord. And I'm going to talk. I'm going to tell the whole story. Not just part of it. But I'm going to tell the whole story. Not just the parts that make me look good. I'm going to tell you about how. When I was lost. When I was downtrodden. How Jesus rescued me. How he saved me. Amen. How he right. continues to convert me. How he Amen. continues to bless me. How he continues to yeah. increase me. How he continues to teach me. We're going to tell the whole story. That's what y'all going to be telling people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was that person. <laughs> but let me tell you about somebody who can change and transform anybody. Let me tell you about the power of the blood. How cleansing Come on now. it is. Not yeah. only how cleansing, but how it covers. Yes. Let me tell you about, do you want to know? Do mm -hmm. you want to hear? Mm -hmm. If not, exit stage left. Get out my face. Mm -hmm. Get out my F-A-C-E. Okay? Have several seats. Mm. All right? As a matter of fact, if it's 50 seats in here, have all of them. Mm. But get out of my face. Okay? Because mm. the person that you knew, I am not that person anymore. I am a brand new creature. Yes. Okay? On a mission. Mm. And you might not like my mission. Amen. But you ain't going to stop my mission. Okay. You're not going to stop me from doing it. What the Lord Jesus Christ has caused me to do. I don't care who you knew me as. And keep turning your nose down. While you turning your nose down. We walking on past you. We growing. 
We glowing. We getting our Jesus on. And when it's time to come back, I just want when he comes back, I just want to know which which version are you? Hmm. Are you one of the five wise ones? Hmm. Are you one of the five foolish ones? Well, whichever one you are, if you the foolish, don't be asking me for none of my oil because you can't have none. Okay. I got to have all mines for me. Okay? Amen. So now when it's time to go in hmm. for the bridal, whatever, feast, the marriage, or whatever, you're going to be one of the ones knocking at the door. Let us in. No, no ma'am. No, sir. Hmm. Because you was too busy doing this. Hmm. Ooh, they think they is. Okay? Tell them to fix your face. Fix your face, okay? Go, get you a rag, wash your face, and then fix it. Amen. Get on this train, okay? That's right. You might not like my mission, Auntie Angie, but you can't stop my mission. All right. You sure can't. You sure can't. You can't stop it. Well, who gonna check me, But What you gonna do? I'm telling you what that says the Lord. Amen. Okay? And the question here says, when someone you know has displayed surprising insights and knowledge, what were yours and others' reactions? Listen, I done learned to rejoice. I don't know about y'all, but I done learned to rejoice, okay? Because even when the Lord is stepping on my toes and spanking my behind, I'm grateful. You know why? Because Proverbs says that the rod drives foolishness out of the child, Okay? So they can act like somebody. Because you training the child up to be a productive citizen, a proper adult. You don't want them out in these streets embarrassing you and making your name bad. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder what so-and-so and so. I wonder why I know they mama, they mama work hard and so, well, she, they must not have been doing something. And you know what? Why can somebody explain that to me? Why when the kids act bad? That's why Proverbs said that they, you know, they, they hurt their daddy feelings and bring shame to their mama. Hmm. Cause the first thing that ha something happened to the child, they be like, "Well, I know they mama. Hmm. Why you don't say you know they daddy? <laughs> you know, I know they mama. I know she. Listen, we are being raised, we are being trained, and." We need to accept whatever form of correction God brings. Amen. Okay? Whatever form of steering, we need to just go with it. Okay? We need to stop, you know. <gasps> Why is this happening to me? I don't, under I don't understand. It's just. It's not working. Why me, God? Why me? Why not you? Why not? Listen, we have got to get comfortable with correction. We have got to get comfortable with being chastised. Because we, listen, God says he, if he love you, he going to chastise you. That's what he said. Okay? And so we need to be prepared to hear whatever he has to say to us. And not only do we need to be prepared, but once we have been chastised, we don't need to do a 360. We need to do a 180, okay? Because mm, we, we turning our back on that foolishness. Amen. We, all right, we done got punished for that. We done got spanking for that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, we done been corrected for that. All right, because we done been corrected. Time, let's do something different, okay? And, and, and guess what? The expectation is, and I'm telling y'all that this today, this is a challenge. If you can change, if you can do something different, the expectation is that people in your realm of influence can change and do something different too. If they can't, then they don't need to be in your realm of operation no more mm -hmm. because they are hindering you mm -hmm. and me from walking like we supposed to walk, okay? And I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be unfettered. I don't care. There's a song. Y'all know the song say, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Y'all know that song? Okay. Mm -hmm. that's That needs to be our mentality. I will go even if I have to go by myself. Okay? Because I'm, listen, 
<laughs> I got oil in my lamp, and I'm waiting for the bridegroom. Y'all ain't going to have me messed up. Right. That's what we need to tell them. Y'all is not going to have me I'm not going to let you. Okay, I only got one soul to be saved and to have it properly fitted for the sky. All right? So, when we start to talk about people and their reactions, and here again, when you look at their reactions, see, now, now you beginning to discern and recognize the tree. You So, you know the fruit. So, at this point, you already know, okay, I don't need to be hanging out with them. I can't, mm -mm. I can't go there. Because if you truly my friend, if you showing out, I can pull you to the side and be like, no, don't act like that. Don't do it like that now. Mm -hmm. And if you are truly converted, okay, you going to, that's right, Tasha, the expectation, and that's the other thing. We hold each other accountable. And so the expectation is that if you come to me and you say, you know, call us so-and-so, 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 if it's according to the word of God, I, I need to be looking at you and be like, you know, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Help me. I, cause, you know, I, I struggle with that. Thank you. Pray for me. I need to turn it around. And I should be able to do the same to you and not be looking down at or frowning because you're doing something different or God has called you out mm -hmm. to fulfill a particular mission. I have my own mission to fulfill. So, why am I looking funny at you? And why am I having jealousy and envy in my heart? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, your level or your elevation has come. Come on now. And then I'm going, mm. who they think they is? Mm -hmm. they, been, I, mm -mm. I, they can't come to my house. Mm. They can't. Uh, they probably look at you like, I don't want to come to your house. All right. Because you is pissy. You pissy wissy, okay? Mm -mm. I can't even do it. I just can't even do it. So, having said that, we have got to get in this word, know this word. We got to stand by it. And whoever don't go with us, we got to have that mentality and that mindset that it's all right. It's, I mean, I lament over the relationship. Because they were a good friend. But at the same time, God has called us to be come out from among them and be separate. And so I've got to be separate. But I'm gonna keep praying for them. I'm gonna keep hopefully they will they will begin to listen to reason. They will turn a corner. But guess what? Even if they don't, what's your call? What are you required to do? You are that part. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's about you and Jesus. It's about your walk with him. All right? And sometimes we are going to offend people. That's right, Tasha. Clap and cheer for everybody because you don't know. You don't know what this, what God is, what conversations they've been having. Okay? Pay attention and focus on the conversations that you and God have been having. Okay? We have got to, like I said, we, we being challenged and we being stretched. So we have got to begin to come out of our comfort zone. All right. It's time for the, they, they always talking about the Falcons rising up. Come on, church. Hmm. It's time for the church to rise up. Okay. On, and here it says, our last one, it says, and listen, this is a fitting title. A fitting title, not just for Jesus, but for all of us. We got to get it in our mind. The, the title says, A Prophet Without Honor. Listen, don't look for nothing. Don't expect nothing, okay? Don't expect for people to give you accolades. Don't expect for people to applaud you. Matter of fact, expect the opposite. Expect that somebody going to have something nasty to say. They're going to be spewing venom. They once where they were smiling and grinning in your face. Now they don't even invite you over to the house no more. They won't even answer the phone when you call. Mm -hmm. Expect those things. Mm -hmm. Because when you begin to make a walk or make a decision for God, let me the vipers are coming out. You will quickly, quickly <laughs> find out. 
Just who was really for you. Come on now. Just who was really there. Them people who you, you thought they were so great and they were so wonderful, they're going to be the first ones to turn on you. Mm. Okay? Just, if you don't believe me, if you haven't done it yet, just, just do it. Begin to make your stand for God and watch and see. People reveal themselves yeah, to you who, for who they are. Okay? And I listen, I could write a book. A whole book. Me and Kenard was talking this morning. We Just this morning, we got an instance. And I'm sitting up going, okay, for real? And people wondering why. Jesus done pushed the reset button on the church. People wondering why we not in the building. Because when we was in the building, we weren't in the building. Come on now. We were somewhere else. <laughs> Y'all know that's it's a secular song, but <clears throat> you know that song they go, you know, you know your your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. And Jesus sitting up in heaven going, You messing me around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all know it was people that we was in the building, but we weren't in the building. <laughs> Okay, are you right, Trina? I'm going to write that book, girl. Let me tell y'all something. Okay? Okay, listen. Y'all know how it is. I'm just, you know, I'm just being honest. If I ain't being honest, sue me. I mean, I ain't got nothing to give you, but I mean, you know, if I ain't being honest, I'm just trying to keep it real. I, I hope y'all feeling me. Is you feeling me? Is you feeling me? Okay. All right. Now, see, and I just said this. Listen, I ain't trying to be crazy, Vanessa. I'm just trying to be honest. I mean, I'm trying to keep it light and comical, but I'm being so serious. I'm I'm serious, okay? But it says a prophet without honor. And I just said this about deliverance and people mindset. Why they can't, why you stuck in your situations. And I'm not saying you, but why people are stuck in their situations and they circumstances is because of their mind. In verse 5 here, it says, Jesus could not do any miracles there. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do none. Mm -hmm. It said, except lay his hands on a few sick on a people, few. on a few, and healed them. Yeah. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. And that is our job. That's why the bar has to be raised. That's why the standard has to be raised. That's why our expectations have mm -hmm. to be, well, we're going to do such and such so-and-so. But if you ain't going with us, guess what? Oh, well. I mean, I love you, but we can't kick it because, listen, I need for some things to change in my life. I don't need to have this instance where God can only do a mm -hmm. few miracles in my life. Because let me tell you something. It's too many things going on. They got the Rona out here. Okay. And I need to be able, hey, Maria, I need to be able to speak to somebody with Rona and be like, you got to go. And not to mention, now we got um two new ones. Okay. The the dog on now, something we heard or seen since God knows when. Now they talking about the dog on Black Death, the bubonic plague. Okay, and then I was watching something the other day. This lady, she done tested negative for Corona, but they calling it, it's, they say it's more deadly than that. Mm. And it's called, she said something about bilateral pneumonia. They don't even have a name for it. Mm. But regardless, regardless, when I saw it, and I have to share this with y'all. When I saw it, fear wasn't the first thing that struck me. Matter of fact, fear did not strike me at all. I'm going to tell you what happened. I got mad. Because I'm like, all right, see, this is why we need to be fasting and praying. Mm -hmm. Because somebody need to lay hands on her and, and be fasting. Because that's one of them things that's only going to come out through fasting and prayer. Amen. Okay? I, don't, I need to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. I need to be able to walk up to somebody's casket and be like, no, it won't get up. It's time. It's not time for you. Get up. Mm -hmm. You got more work to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I believe it mm -hmm. with all of my heart. I have seen it with my own eyes. If I had not seen it, I might have some trouble. But I have seen it. Okay, my, my son 
was raised off of his bed of affliction. I have a cousin. God healed. Okay? Mm -hmm. From sickle cell. All right? My daughter was healed and delivered mm -hmm. from ovarian mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. If I had not seen that oh, with my own eyes. Come on, man. Okay? And even having not seen it because I believe God. Mm. And not only, but that was all I had to hold on to. I yes. had to, I was at the end of my row. I had to tie a knot and hang on. Mm. And y'all know, y'all done had some situations where all you could do was tie a knot in your rope and hang the heck on. Mm. Y'all know this to be true. Mm. So I know God is able and I know he is willing. I do not accept that it is what it is. Mm. I do not accept. Well, it was just stay tight. I don't accept that. Because Psalm said that you you could live, God said you could live out 70 years. The rest you live out by faith. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me if the word of God said he give you at least 70, that you were supposed to go at 35? Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a problem with that. I, I really do. I have got a problem with that. And I just want to know, can the real church go ahead and stand up? I'm so tired of people talking about what they think. I'm, I'm not interested in what you think. Mm. You get hired on a job based on your knowledge and your expertise. That's when you coming in the door. Now, they're going to provide some training, but they paying you based off of what you know. Mm. They are not paying you for what you think. And so I'm so tired of the what you think mentality. I don't even care about that. That's right, Auntie Vera, grace years. Okay? God is able, Latasha. I'm a, when, a, when is the rest of the world going to figure out that he is able? Mm. And I need for us. It is time, y'all. Mm. I'm, I'm tired. Listen, let me mm. tell y'all something. I'm not so much tired about the quarantine or whatever, because sometimes I feel like that's best. Sometimes we need to be closed off mm -hmm. because we need to be reflecting. We need to be doing some self-examination. You know, we need to, sometimes we need to get our priorities right. Good morning, Sister Lisa. Okay. So that part I'm not tired. I'm, I'm not worried about. But what I am mad about is for one, People thinking whatever they want to think about God. Not only thinking about what they want to think about God, but perpetrating lies. Not That's not what the words say. That is not what the words say. Mm -hmm. That's right, um, Sister Lisa. We do have the power over the enemy. But how many people know that? How many people know that the power of life and death is in the tongue? Let me tell you something. Satan has centuries to master it. He knows that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so he understands that if he can get us to continue to speak death, come on now. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you sometimes hashtag be quiet sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to some of our filters between our head and our mouth, the filter need to be changed. All right. Okay, it's clogged up. We need to, you know, fill that, you know, change the filter and be deliberate in our speech. That way, people don't have to wonder about, did you mean what you said? Mm -hmm. Because you said what you said and you meant it because you was deliberate in your speech. That's right, Auntie. Listen, you got, Auntie Angie, you have got to believe that he is mm -hmm. who he is, who he said he is, and that he is a rewarder mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. That's right. We have got to seek him. We have got to seek his will. And you know how we do it? You know how we do it? Let, let me see that. Let me tell you how we diligently seek him. With this right here. It's backwards. But y'all know how to spell it. You know how to spell it. Okay? Through his word and through prayer. We got to be praying. Okay? Calling out. Because the weapons of our warfare are not mm -hmm. carnal. Mm -hmm. But they are mighty. Yes. Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We got to pull these strongholds down. Mm -hmm. We can't be entertaining these foolish conversations with people. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if they determine that they're going to do what they want to when they want to, then y'all know what y'all need to do? Shake the dust off your feet and don't walk away. Run. Mm -hmm. Run. Okay? Run. Once you done shake, shake, 
Child wash, you know, dusted your your feet and your shoulders and whatever else out. Run. Mm -hmm. Let them have it. Let them have it because I ain't talking to you anymore. Anyway, I'm sorry. It says, after listening to the taunts and slights, Jesus finally addressed those assembled in the synagogue. Here you go. We're addressing the people. It says anyone other than Jesus in that same situation might have had some strong words to share. Instead, Jesus modified a common saying of that time to convey his disappointment in his family and hometown. Since Nazareth was a small village, Jesus likely had other relatives present besides his siblings, which he probably did. The saying was a prophet is not welcome without honor except in his own town. Jesus added among his relatives and in his own home, Jesus' family was already on record as having issues with Jesus' ministry. Okay, so now we thinking it's the strangers, but y'all, sometimes it's your own family. Okay, it says we may view Jesus' statement as a major turning point in his earthly ministry. He was now making a formal break with his hometown. Uh, listen, hmm. it's time to make a break. Hmm. It's time to make a break. Hmm. Okay, it says... We see parallels in Jesus' instructions when he commissioned the 12 to minister in Jewish towns. I just said this. Listen, and whoever will not receive you nor hear your words. Are y'all hearing me? Whoever does not receive you. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is coming from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm challenging you. Mm -hmm. If they don't receive you or they don't hear you, mm -hmm. this is what you do. It says when you depart from that house or city, Shake the dust off your feet. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to tear the house up. Mm -mm. We ain't going to do that. We ain't got no work. We, we shaking the dust. There is a secular song that talks about that. I ain't going there, but I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> the, the song say, if you feeling like a, you know, they say pimp. But I'm going to say, if you feeling like a Christian, then go and brush your shoulders off. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, shake it off. Mariah Carey had a song too. Now she she say, I got to shake it off. I got to do what's best for me. No, we doing what's best for our lives and the lives of those around us because we trying to change the hearts and minds of men. We're not here to argue. We're here to give the word. Either you receive it or you don't. That's basically what it's saying here. Either you hear what's being said or you don't. If you don't, then guess what? I'm shaking. I'm dusting. Because I ain't got I ain't got time. Okay? It says the people of Nazareth were so hard-hearted toward Jesus until he could only heal a few sick people. Mm -hmm. They they don't want their minds changed. They don't want them strongholds torn down. Okay. It says Jesus gave the reason why those healed were healed and why others were not. It was because of a lack of faith. Yes. Why is it a lack of faith? Because you looking at him going, oh, that's Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. I can't receive that from him because so and so and so and so. And that's another thing. <clears throat> they can't receive that from you. Just keep praying. Praying that God will send somebody who they can receive from. Okay? So that later on they can come back and say, you know, I, I couldn't understand that when you were saying that. But thank God I see. I once was blind, but now I see. That's what we want. That's the goal. Not to be like, oh, Get on my level. Get on my level. And it's my haters. Get on my level. No. You want people to be saved. You want them to be changed. And if they cannot receive from you at that moment, continue to pray. Continue to believe God that he will send somebody. Because you do want your relatives, your family members, your friends. You want people around you in your, your realm of operation. You want those people to be saved. Because Jesus wants them saved. He loves them all. It's not his will that anybody should perish. Okay? It says Jesus was amazed at the lack of faith of the people in his hometown. Since he was God, the son, Jesus knew that they were not going to believe. Still, he was amazed at the state of human nature. That people would not believe what their ears heard and their eyes saw from one they had known from birth. After this episode, Jesus left and began teaching across the region. And it says, why is there often tension between a person and his or her family, a hometown? Because y'all know, y'all know because the, y they grew up with you. They know who you are. Mm. And you one of us. How dare you? Mm. 
But we got to stop that. Mm -hmm. We have got to applaud whoever Amen. and whenever because we don't never know when our change is coming. We don't never know when it's going to be our time to be called. And when it's our time to be called, we want to be well received. Amen. And what's more than that is if there's a change that needs to take place on the inside, mm. if it needs to happen on the inside, why not let it come from you? What you say, Maria? That's right. As long as they receive the message, they may not receive it from us. But that's the other reason, too, why we can't be afraid to give the truth and worry about if people are going to be offended. Because they may not receive it from you. But I guarantee you, those words will stick with them. They will remember that. When somebody else comes or when somebody brings up something, they will hear your voice in the back of their head saying whatever it was you said. And they'll be like, you know, such and such and so-and-so told me that. And I, I guess they were right. So it's not to be proud or to be arrogant or to turn our nose up. Shaking the dust means it's more people who need me. I, I don't have time to waste. If they're not receiving me, okay. It's not that I don't love them. I do love them. Mm -hmm. But there is somebody. That's why I tell y'all to share this. There is somebody who needs to hear this. Mm -hmm. They need to understand. They need to grow. They need to learn. Okay, and so we are, we are about eight minutes over, but I just want to encourage you all, mm -hmm. please begin to discern the seasons. We, we talked about that last week. Discern the seasons. It's time. It is time out. It's time for us to begin to be challenged. Um, it is Thank you, um, Cousin Ivanya. I appreciate that. Um, it's time out for um, our own personal inhibitions and hang-ups. Listen, pray about those things. Ask God to change. Um, oh, praise God, Shannon. I'm glad y'all were blessed. Um, we got to listen. Whatever it is that you fear or that you're concerned about, Put it on the altar. Take it to God. He already knows. But he wants to know that you are not um, deceived or deluded. Because he said, don't deceive yourself. He's not mocked. He already knows. Mm -hmm. But do you know? Mm -hmm. Have you done some self-examination? That's right. Put it on the altar. And put your tennis shoes on. Mm -hmm. And let's just start running. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Continue to thank God and bless him. For delivering you. Th oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. I feel the Spirit in here, y'all. Mm. Listen. Mm. Bless him. Hallelujah. Thank him Amen. for your deliverance. Thank you, but don't stop mm -mm. giving your testimony yes. and telling people, listen, I serve a, a risen Savior. Yes. The Most High God. He is able. Hallelujah. He is well capable yes. of doing and performing. Mm. But are you willing to open your heart and change your mind? Are you willing to see past your current circumstances? Thank you, Lord. Cause yeah, it is. It, it I see with my own eyes. It is bad. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm walking by faith yeah. and not by sight. Glory. I'm walking by what I can't see mm. because I know that I serve an all-powerful God, oh, a Lord, mighty Jesus. God. Thank if He Lord. so sees fit to deliver, He will. Mm, mm. If he so sees fit to heal, he will. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that. Yes. But yes. I have to know that if he don't stretch his hand out in the way I think he should stretch Come his on, hand man. out, that his ways are higher than my ways. Yes. And his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Mm. But I know that he has plans for me, mm. plans to prosper me, yes. plans to give me hope and a good future and to bring me to an expected Come end. On, I know that because that's what the word says mm. and it's in my heart. And nobody can make me doubt him. I know, know too, too much, much about, about him. Yes. yes okay. Yes, yes. That has got to be our cry, our walk every day, all day, mm -hmm. not every air day, mm -hmm. all day. Amen. Because we are, we belong to the most high. Yes. So be prepared to be uncomfortable. 
Be prepared to be stretched. Yeah. Be prepared to be challenged and be okay with it. That's this is what you need to be saying. Well, it is what it is. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because God has said it. All right? Yes. And so I'm getting ready to get out of here. Okay? Because I'm about I'm gonna be shouting in a minute. And we'll, home, we'll never get out of here. But anyway, it says. Some people amaze us by displaying unexpected wisdom. It says, what happens when people show such extraordinary wisdom? Mark tells us that the people in Jesus' hometown were both astounded and offended mm -hmm. by Jesus' wise teachings. Mm -hmm. And the religious leaders were incensed when Jesus' wisdom challenged their traditions. Mm -hmm. Be okay with challenging the traditions. The Bible says that the, the, the traditions of man make the word of God of none effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be prepared to be challenged. Amen. Be prepared to be stretched. Mm -hmm. And then so being challenged and being stretched, having those strongholds in our minds torn down, be prepared because you are a child of the most high God. Mm -hmm. You are an ambassador of Christ. Heaven is your home. Be prepared to challenge. Be prepared to offend. But be prepared to shake the dust when you not receive. But keep praying. Keep fasting. Don't give up. Don't quit. And begin to rebuke. Begin to cast out. It's your birthright. It was given to us. Yes. We are joint heirs with Christ. So having said that, y'all, I love y'all. I got listen, the Holy Spirit. Listen, see here again. I don't know about this time thing. Maybe we need to. Okay, I'm not going there. But anyway, I love y'all. Bless y'all. Thank y'all for being uh, on here. And when y'all see people being pissy-wissy, tell them. Stop being pissy-wissy. Stop it. It's not attractive. It's not a good look. Period. Okay? But love y'all. Bless y'all. Thank y'all for uh, joining us. Um, I don't know what your, your next, you know, whatever is going to be. But if you got time... Y'all join us for Kinar to be on here um, preaching in a little bit, tearing up my dining room table. But it's all right. Yeah. Having mm -hmm. said that, y'all be good. And until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.